a guy called Paul who had a plaque put up to him in the bear pit. Uh, the city council have taken that down. Uh, it was only a few months ago. Uh, he was a homeless uh, chap who was very much lo- loved by many people who were around there. But um, contractors for working for or the city council themselves have unscrewed it and taken it away. Uh, this is part of a bit of a dispute that's go- been going on, Martin, now. Uh, I mean, originally, George Ferguson brought in the bear pit improvement group, the idea being to make the place uh, a nicer place to kind of walk through with a bit of street art, uh, a few people selling teas and coffees, maybe uh, um, that sort of thing. Uh, what do you make of this falling out? Because effectively the traders who've been there have said that we don't want any more of these street artists or homeless people here. Just get rid of them. And the council have agreed. And, and then they've now been the Bear Pit Improvement Group, uh, which is a, a group um, connected with Stokes Croft, People's Republic of Stokes Croft, have now been told, out you go. Over the years, the bear pit has definitely improved, partly through the street art and partly through the fact that they've got, you know, small businesses operating down there. When I first came to Bristol, you know, 20 years ago, uh, it was basically just uh, a place where the sort of homeless and, and uh, alcoholic people used to hang out. And it was, it was a space for them, but it wasn't a space for anybody else. But there's been a lot of um, discussion about it in the press, particularly in the Bristol Post and in uh, Bristol 24-7. And I was really pretty shocked with 24-7. Um, which was initially started up by a friend of mine um, and then taken over by the people who used to run the venue. Uh, And they had an article about it where they interviewed um, PRSC, um, People's Republic of Stokescroft, Chris Chalkley, who is um, one of the main people behind the uh, getting the street art and getting the homeless people uh, into the bear pit in a sort of uh, at least finding places for them there and transforming the place a tremendous amount of hours he spent down there doing this stuff uh, and he wasn't even quoted in the article so they interviewed him but then ignored him uh, on Bristol 24-7 I think that's an appalling bit of journalism so let's just have a bit of both sides but anyway I tracked down Chris Chalkley earlier on this week uh, and spoke to him about the bear pit and what's been happening down there my name's Chris Chalkley. I'm from the People's Republic of Stokescroft. And you're involved in the Bear Pit. In fact, you were one of the people who was instrumental in transforming the place. Yeah, we founded it about seven years ago. It was a uh, Bear Pit Improvement Group? Yes, uh, it was uh, a CIC was formed called uh, the Bear Pit Improvement Group. Well, I think most people would agree, agree there's been improvement. I mean, it certainly looks better. Um, but you've had problems recently, haven't you? Yeah, no, we've been... Um, um, working for the last seven years to improve the space, and uh, I think in many ways it's improved beyond recognition. Recently, there has been a campaign to discredit the extraordinary work that has been done, and this is uh, related to a schism that took place between traders and the original group. Uh, so, I mean, do you think it was a mistake to bring traders in? Because it isn't necessarily compatible having some, some homeless people, some sort of street artists in with traders. I think we have to decide what that space is all about, really. It, what is interesting about it is it sits cheek by jowl with um, uh, the biggest corporate trading area in the city, Broadmead and then, of course, Cabot Circus. And for since the 1960s, it's been a, an oasis for alternative culture in in many ways and and um, that was the premise the whole premise when we started the bear pit improvement group is that this could be an exemplar of genuine community to work with what was already there so is the is the vision for a sort of open air exhibition space with a few places to buy fruit and vegetable have a cup of tea i think that the the vision at least from my point of view, was was that this was a place of genuine experiment, and and the the um, commercialisation of it has proven to be problematic. In, so in, is in, the experiment in, over now? No, for me, absolutely not. I think that what what we are doing, what has been going on in Stokescroft, and is uh, the heart of what's going on in Bristol, is a genuine debate about where we want our society to go, and and uh, we see from corporate Bristol the development of business, business improvement districts we have showers uh, uh, underneath some businesses that so that if anybody decides to sleep there they will be covered with showers of water we've seen the head of destination Bristol suggest that uh, homeless people should be moved on from business improvement districts in case um, 
terrorist bombs might be hidden underneath their blankets. Uh, there, there is a, a demonization of, of the most vulnerable going on in this city. And, you know, I'm, I'm long in the tooth, and, and I can remember 40 years ago, there were no street people. There was no homeless scenario. This is a direct product of government policy. So whereabouts are the artists, the people that used to be in the bear pit, whereabouts are they going to move to? Well, that's the problem. You know, if you're going to move the street, where where do the street people move to? If we don't actually address the the problems of, of homelessness, of addiction here and become... Actually, Bristol's future really should be about being an example of how we might do these things better. And the, and the uh, suggestion that we should just um, attempt to move it on and sanitise certain areas is, is disastrous. I mean, do you think the council could have had some sort of compromise which would return some of the presence in the bear pit as well as the businesses? I mean, was there a really serious problem, do you think? The problems of the bear pit are overstated. It is not the most cr- criminal... It isn't the place where the most crime takes, takes place in the city. Some would say maybe that's corporate boardrooms. <laughs> yes, maybe that, maybe, yes. Uh, what I actually think is that, that what has happened is Bristol City Council has removed the licence from the community enterprise. And I think what what we as a city now need to do, and partic- in particular relationship to that space, is we need to really plan what we do next. And, uh, and my view is that we can create a genuine... I think the situation with the traders who have been there for, the, for that period is, is one that is, is at best murky. Um, my understanding is that no rent has been paid for the last 18 months. Um, there is an element of favouritism, it would seem, amongst certain councillors and cer- certain council officers. And I think uh, there has been a demonisation of certain community groups. And I think this all has to come out in the wash. This is a public space and the street people were here before the traders and the graffiti artists too. And I think we should be looking at, uh, at what we really do to create an extraordinary I mean, exemplar in the y- place, your, centre of your, our city. Your improvement group has been removed, but there's no way really to remove the street artists. They'll be down there at night time or the homeless. Exactly, exactly. So we have to work. One of the, the central tenets of uh, PRC's philosophy is that you work with the grain of the wood. So, you know, if we're going to have any enterprises down there, perhaps we should be having enterprises that are related to the homeless scenario. So perhaps we have Bristol Drugs Project involved down there. Perhaps we have St Mungo's involved down there. And we have um, uh, food offerings that are ones that are sympathetic to the, the needs of the people who are already there. Are there, are there soup runs and things like that happening there? The well, way? it's a very interesting thing about that is that, that soup runs used to occur a lot in the bear pit. It was a known place for that. And over the last seven years, those activities have been pushed out of the bear pit, which is antithetical to what you would think ought to happen. (laughs) It's interesting. Maybe the council will crunch on this a bit more anyway. Thanks, Chris Chalkley, for joining us. And Martin, I hope that's enlightened you a little bit on what's been going on at the Bear Pit, but uh, it does seem to me the traders are the only people that matter to the City Council. The idea that homeless people and artists might want to use the space seems to be out the window, which is strange because, as Chris said there, apparently they're not paying rent. Well, yeah, and I would argue that the that the the People's Republic of Stokes Croft created the atmosphere in which the traders can operate. Before they before they were in there, the place really was, uh, uh, you know, a place which the homeless had made their own, and they wouldn't the, the, the traders wouldn't be operating there at all if there hadn't been uh, some attempt to upgrade the area. Uh, and, but now, of course, having you know, like cuckoos in the nest, they're now saying that they they want that they want the whole show for themselves. It's always been a problematic space, and I do appreciate that Chris Chalkley and the people at PSRC have, you know, as, as, as was just pointed out... PRSC. PRSC are trying to experiment with, you know, using city space in a different kind of way. And uh, it's a shame that the council 
uh, are under pressure from commercial interests, really, uh, to, you know, basically make the whole place... I don't think it'll work as a commercial place, frankly. Um, you know, it's, it's not really the right sort of space for a successful commercial, purely commercial activity to go on. Uh, lots of people, now they've put in the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the pedestrian crossings and things around it. Most, many people won't go under there who, who you know, unless they've got some kind of alternative so interest. why is a so-called Labour Council uh, much more interested in trying to get money, even though it's not getting any money, well, than quite, it is in the homeless and artists? Well, What's may, going on? It may very well be that the, the lobby, the commercial lobby is lobbying the officers and that the council itself is just being lackadaisical about it and not, and, and not seeing it as, an, as, as a, uh, you know, as, as an area to be, to be developed in, a, in an alternative way. I don't know enough about it other than, that, other than to say that. But, I, I, you know, I think it, it, in, in many ways I think it's been a success down there and it's a shame that all this squabbling is undermining what's been achieved. It just seems to me that uh, with m- so much of the press here, apart possibly from uh, BBC, Bristol 24-7 uh, taking a really partisan view. That this is a little story that, that, um, that they have decided that they're just going to shut out some of the main people in the debate and put, a, put out a, a half-baked report on it. Well, I think the pressure of commercial interests is overwhelming and relentless uh, in, in most spheres of life. And, um, you know, I mean, the, the, the uh, council officer who is saying that uh, the homeless might be hiding bombs in their belongings, I mean, that just strikes me. I mean, frankly, he should have been reprimanded for that. And if I was in charge, I'd have sacked him.